How's it guys? It's here, Kalisi here. Um, I'm here today with the guys from the Proxy Emporium. Um, yeah, I just want you guys to enjoy this video and see how amazing they make my table. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to, 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 for you guys to see their work. It's beautiful and I think you'll enjoy it. And yeah, go check it out on YouTube and go look at my pictures on Instagram too. I'll be posting on the table with all my dinners. Cheers, guys. Hey guys, it's Dave here from Proxy Emporium. Wow is all I can say. What an honor and a privilege it was to build such a beautiful and unique piece for one of the greatest South African heroes of all time. Thank you to the Khaleesi family, Rachel and Sia, for affording us this opportunity to make this project for you. It was such a great experience from beginning to end. I hope you enjoy this video of how we built this project. Rachel and Sia chose this beautiful piece of matumi. It was 3.4 meters long, 1.1 meters wide, and 8 centimeters thick. The first thing we did with the slab was to flatten it on our CNC. It's crucial that your wood is always flat and straight. Matumi is a wood species unique to the Haafeld area of South Africa. It has a very unique grain and characteristic. As you'll see, it is recognized by its constant changing and almost shapeshifter-like patterns. You can see that we burnt the edge of the slab to add character, and that charred look really adds a great depth to this piece. Next up, we seal the slab using our Primer Poxy. Primer Poxy is great for waterproofing and sealing surfaces. This is also how you avoid a lot of bubbles in your resin later on. Primer Poxy works better than other sealing agents when working with epoxy because it is an epoxy itself. It isn't foreign to the resin you are using. Remember that any solvents, oils or water will cause your resin not to perform properly. I'm now putting together the mold for this beast. I had to double wall the mold for this table. You can see how beautiful and clean those pocket holes look. I've put my screws in and made sure my mold is 100% straight and 100% level before I mix my resin. We worked out that we need 140 kilos of epoxy to fill this table. Because we're pouring in layers, I first weighed out all the resin we needed, I mixed in the black pigment, and I'm testing with a cup to see the color and clarity, as I wanted to keep it translucent. Here's our first pour. Look how beautiful that resin looks. You'll notice the resin looks blue in this first layer, but that's because it's transparent. And as we add more layers, the tint will become more and more black. Rachel and Sia asked for this table to be encased with transparent black epoxy. We used our casting epoxy to build this project. Our casting epoxy is perfect for layer pouring and encapsulation. I chose to pour this project in layers instead of using our deep pour resin. I did this because it was summer and when doing big pours in the summer heat, it's easier to manage risk on layer pours. After each pour, I'm just going over all these bubbles with a blowtorch. Remember that all resin will have bubbles in it in the beginning. The way you can tell a good quality resin is how easily those bubbles are able to escape other resin to the top. I'm going to lightly scuff the epoxy in between each pore to sand out any dust or particles that may have landed in the resin while it was curing. 
as well as create some additional bond between the layers. After scuffing, I wipe the fine dust away with pure alcohol as it evaporates quickly and gets into those fine scratches with ease. Now that you can see the epoxy is almost full, that charred edge is adding so much character. And out the mold she comes. Onto the back of our trailer, we will be taking her to get flattened again on our CNC. we CNC'd this table down, we had our team do a rough sand to prepare for our next stage of finishing. Now for the legs. I'm setting a piece of tape to the exact depth I want the steel rods to go into the legs. These legs are going to connect to our steel frame that goes under the table. We brought the tabletop back to our workshop to do a flood coat to fill all the natural cracks in the Matumi. Matumi does crack a lot and it's better to make sure it's completely sealed and filled. The flood coat is also for the final finished look. Now that we've flood coated and rolled on our resin, I'm just getting rid of any excess bubbles with my blowtorch. I'm using some epoxy to anchor down these rods. The epoxy is just going to anchor them into the wood and make the bond much stronger. On this table we decided to use Odie's wood oil to further seal and stabilize the wood. Mm -hmm. 
Now it's time to polish up. A few high grade polishing pads, some water and then some polishing compounds will bring out the high gloss finish we want. You can see Byron's hand coming through so clearly now under the resin and you can see how polished and see-through our table is starting to look. One last test run before she's on her way to KZN. My heart was in my throat, but everything was a perfect, snug fit. Rachel and Sia chose these custom legs that we made out of Matumi. We will be uploading the video on how to make these legs. They're just so beautiful, we felt they deserved their own video. What a stunner. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed this project. What do you think, sir? Perfect. <laughs> Thank you again to Rachel and Sia for affording us this amazing opportunity. And remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram for more cool content we have to share. <laughs>